Hi everyone, hello, hello. I'm just checking, I've got everything. I don't know if I have anyway. Well, let's get cracking. We needed to do something for the centre spreads and my um, remnant situation was getting a bit dire, to be honest. So this is what I've come up with. Um, it's just two double pockets facing each other, made with remnants, and I put um, these little cards, which I will show you how I made, because uh, last time when I made something like this, I said, oh, it's too simple for a video. And so many people contacted me and said, look, it might be simple for you, but it's not simple for me. Um, I don't know how you do it. So I will show how you do that. I'll show how I made the pockets and then I'll show what I've made to put uh, the tag to go in the back. So there we go. It's getting good and chunky. Right, um, so I just looked at some remnants. And as I say, I'm, I'm not left with a load of kind of quality remnants at this stage. They're just, um, yeah, just remnants. So I want, I want my pockets to be sort of three inches, each one to be kind of three inches and five inches across. And that one's going to do it, I'm sure. So let's cut that at five, five inches wide and three inches tall like that keep that that can go out what else do i have oh that's not big enough for anything that one would be um that one would be it's got some ink on it though um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's no good. Yeah, this, let's do this side. So cut it at five. And hope it's three. Oh, it's just a bit short of three. Well, it's just going to have to be a bit short of three. That's what's going to have to happen there. And I've got enough, I think, to easily make another one. So all that I did then was rip the top edge. Let's tear it, tear it down, preserving as much as you can, obviously. Just want to make it look a bit raggy on the top because it is a remnant journal after all. And that's been the theme throughout. So I hope all you guys are doing okay, uh, weather-wise, health-wise, every sort of wise. Um, we are fine. Uh, it's not raining as we speak, which is uh, unusual. <laughs> and the same on the other one. Just take the top bit off. Uh, Mr. F's been away today getting the grocery shopping for the week. He had a really good list. We went through all our sort of menu for the coming week yesterday evening so we could send him off with a a, li a proper list of everything that was needed so yeah that's going to go like that and that'll be fine so i just want to ink around it now i've got so many inks out here it's kind of hard to see where is my here we go scorched timber actually i wonder if that would look better down there yeah i might do it that way actually not that it really matters give that top bit a really good inking so you want to accentuate that uh, torn edge so i hope some of you are enjoying watching these um, techniques that i demonstrate the inky backgrounds and stuff because i know a lot of you have run scared of inky backgrounds you think it's really messy uh, which it can be <laughs> don't get me wrong uh, this you don't need to do the bottom bit because it's going to get tucked in there but the other three sides need inking um, but I hope I've broken it down in, in a way that you feel you could actually have a go at it because they're lovely and you don't need to even make them grungy you can make them as we did with the um, one with birds on we made that in purples and that was just very pretty so what I'm going to do now is 
stick these together just a little bit along the bottom side there and a little bit here um, I am going to sew these so it doesn't have to be a super super strong bond So that's okay there. Like that, get rid of that excess glue. And that'll just stay there. And then I just want a little kind of collagey thing here on the front. Um, I am determined to get through some of these. Honestly, I've got so many. Um, I like these little, these little things. Oh, that's nice, but it's a bit tall, isn't it? Yeah, that's a shame. Nice butterfly there. Uh, what else have I got in the land of flowers? That one. These have been picked over so often that literally everything that's any good has kind of gone. <laughs> well, that's not true. That No, that, that is not true. There's a lot of things that are still still good. What's that one? I like that one. And I'm going to go for this one. Right, I think that'll do, really. Just pop out that bit there that hasn't pop, jumped out. I'm not going to ink that because they can easily begin to look quite raggy, quite dirty not grungy just dirty so i'm just going to make a really little collage down here where is my box with my curator's snippets um that's quite a nice one i'll put that down there like that I'm just wondering if this, it just looks a bit big scale wise compared to those flowers. So let's just use some, some more of these. That's another nice one, similar sort of colour. Yeah, and what, one more, one more. We can find one more that we like. Oh, that's nice. I think that's absolutely fine. I don't think it needs any more than that. It's kind of not about about this, really. So let's get those inked and stuck. So I'm going to leave everything else in place and just take them out, ink them up and glue them on. I can leave that off for the second it's going to take. Just under there, like so. Then this one. They are fiddly little things to ink around, but it does make a difference. I was just reading at lunch, because I, I was thinking my curator snippets are actually getting down a bit. I thought, oh, I wonder if I should order some more. And uh, you get 233 in the, in the pack. That's a lot. That's a lot of curator's snippets. And I dread to think how many packs I've gone through all my life. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. Because you hardly ever use them singularly, do you? You always putting more than, well, probably three, actually. That's what you probably always put on, something like that. And I just want that up towards the top. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And then we'll stick this on, and then that is really all of the collage that's going to get. It's just, you can go to town on it if you want to. But, you know, bear in mind, there's five signatures two pages of each 
so that's 10. So you're going to have to do this 10 times, whatever you decide to put in here. Um, just there. Lovely. I don't think that's all right anyway. Right. So what I'm going to do now is take this to the sewing machine, sew around it, not the top wiggly ones, just from there, along there, along there, and that'll keep that together nicely, although it is holding anyway. Um, but I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so that's all sewn around the edges. Um, I, I haven't glued that note, uh, and then we can get the top one all the way down. If I glued those, no, well, that's not right. If I glued that there, I wouldn't get anything in that pocket, would I? So that's completely open. So let's just get the journal out. Find the last signature that still needs its, which is this one, the music paper one. And I have been making them in pairs up till now, but just thought I'd spare you that boringness. And that's just going to go on there like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bone folder, press my stitches right down back into that card. And then I'm going to use double sided tape. But if you don't press your stitches down, the tape sort of sits on top of them and you don't get a good purchase. So it's always worth taking that little bit of time to squash your stitches from the back and similarly if you're doing something where you can see the stitches on the back then that's a good way of making them not because they always look uglier don't they than the ones on the front so um, it's a good way of making them look a little bit nicer so I'm just going to use my very narrow red liner tape and that way then we won't eat into too much of the pocket with the glue spreading. So yes, Mr F came back and we had lunch. We had cowboy hot pot. It's one of my favourites. I really, really like it. It's just... A load of beans, tomatoes, carrots, onions, um, and some minced beef, all shoved in the um, crock pot and and cooked up. And we had it yesterday, and there's loads left, so we will no doubt be having that again. Well, we've had it yesterday, today, and no doubt we'll have it tomorrow as well because there's absolutely loads. <laughs> There we go. So let's just oh, some of these ends are a little little on the wayward side, trim those off. And then I'm just gonna take my tweezers and lift up that release tape. I'm sorry if this is really, really easy um for you. And I, I know it is. I just it seems like every time I skip something somebody says, Oh, I don't know how you did that. So I'm just I'm just showing you. So my apologies to the more experienced amongst you who know how to do this in your sleep. Right. So bring in the journal. I'm going to stick it on this side. Actually, it's just easier because it's flat. Um, and just up a little bit from the edge. And with this music paper, we're spoiled. We've got a straight line to go by. Wow. So stick that down on there. That's lovely, lovely, lovely. There we go. Perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is the little card that goes in the front. Um, and I'm actually going to make both of mine because I know that I need a pocket on the other side. So I've cut these off. This is actually watercolour paper. I've cut them off at uh, four by three and three quarters and that's a good fit for those size pockets. I've got my little messy mat out largely because I can't get my big messy mat out and I'm going to use tea dye, just that brush 
I'm going to use Vintage Photo, which is that. And I'm going to use Scorch Timber, which is that brush. Right, so let's make a start. Um, both sides of this paper are quite bumpy. I find for really blending, these big brushes are fabulous. So I'm just coming in from the edge and I'm going over that until I've got a nice depth of colour that I like. And let's come up here. Like that. That's nice. And you don't need to copy this one, just You just want some ink on it. And tea dye is, it's a, it's a light orange. I don't know how else you could describe it really. I used to think it was in the brown family. I'm not so sure that it, it, it could be, or it could be an orange. Don't know. Don't know where you think it sits happily. Um, I used to use it before before the days of grunge, I used to use it a lot as a, as a light brown to ink round um, pages. Uh, then I'm going to go into the vintage photo. There's a bit of a juicier ink pad so it can get more colour down from it. And it blends, oh, it blends beautifully on this watercolour paper. I'm just going to put a little bit down here. So I want to leave some space for the darker Scorch Timber one. So I'll just blend it out like that. And then we'll come here and do the same down here. And you get a, a fabulous blend. There we are. So now I'm ready for my dark scorched timber. And it, I'm going on about the blend like that's the be all and end all. It's not actually, you just want, want to get your colours on. But if you can blend it at the same time, so much the better, I think. So there we are, that's that one. And then a little bit for this one here. I think my um, oxide scorched timber is actually running out. Shows you how, how much I've used it. Fortunately, I have a new one. So there we go. So that's our two pieces um, inked up. Right, so the next thing to do is splash them with water. Right, so I've tried all sorts of things. I've tried paintbrushes, all sorts of things, but this I think is the best way. Cup your hand like that and spray your sprayer into your hand. Turn your hand over and sp splash it. That was not what I intended got a huge bit there that I didn't want and if you sort of flick your fingers you get that nice flickiness it does go other places as well you know off the messy map but such is life so just keep going till you've got what you think is enough on there and I think that's enough I think this bit down here is going to be interesting because it's actually oxidized and it's gone that um, strange colour that the oxides go. So I'm just going to dry that just a little bit. That's fine. And then get a bit of glue roll. 
and just pop that over and that effect that we've just done is called full bleaching because it looks like it's bleached the, the ink out of it so there we are that as I say ended up larger than I wanted it to be but doesn't really matter so right that's fine so I'm just gonna have to dry those so I'll just put you on pause while I dry them so there we are that's those dry and they go in the pocket the four inch side um, is the width part so what I'm gonna do is turn that over that way so I've got this bit at the top and yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to use a, a stencil. I'm using a floral stencil because, you know, I just love my florals. But you could use anything, absolutely any stencil that you like. So load your brush up and it's the wrong way around. And let's use this part here with the big florals on it. Oh no, I was going to do it this side, wasn't I? That's right, I was. Let's bring that down a little bit, down to there. And then ink quite heavily. Well, I ink quite heavily through it. I guess you don't have to. And I'm just going for those two florals there. Well, maybe that leaf. Well, maybe the whole shooting patch. There we are, and that's what you get. And it just, I, I just love it. I love how it looks. So I'm going to use these two down here. So these two will be facing each other, and these will be nearest the centre. That's got an edge on it there. So let's get the edge to the edge. There we go. And then do these two florals here. Two flowers, I mean. There we are. So that's that. It is really as easy as that. Actually, that's come out a little bit pale, that one. A little bit pale. I quite like it when they're really dark. Let's place my stencil back on it. That's better. That's much better. Right, lovely. I love that. So all I need to do now, I'm not going to back these because, as I say, they are watercolour paper and they really are quite thick. They'd be way too thick if they were backed. Um, the back of them will, it just gets dirty. It just does. But whether you want to put a stencil on the back or not, that's up to you. I'm just going to take my corner rounder and cut the, using the middle one, cut the corners off because it is a journaling card um, and I think once the corners are cut off it kind of looks like a journaling card and sew around them so I'll do that at the end but there's our two journaling cards to go in the in the pockets so that was easy wasn't it Nothing untoward there. Right, let's put those there because they're on the sewing pile. Right, let's clean this off because it's bound to have some residual brown. There's always residual brown on everything I touch. Oh well, not much. This just isn't coming up clean anymore. <laughs> Maybe I need a new one, but it's still sticking down really nicely. So as long as none of it transfers, we're OK. Right. So for the next one, I'm just going to use my ordinary mixed media paper. And these are for the tags in the back. So I've cut this off at five and three quarters by three and a half. So it's five and three quarters tall, three and a half wide. And um, I want to... And I've got a strip that obviously I couldn't make another set of tags out of that. So I've kept that out and I'll show you why I want that in a minute. Um, I'm just going to pause you because I need to get fixed with what, oil, what oils? Oils. <laughs> what inks I've got. 
Right, I have looked some inks out. I looked at antique linen, um, spiced marmalade and dried marigold. I'd really like to use the dried marigold more than the spiced marmalade, but I think this pad's getting a bit past it. So first thing I'm going to do is use the antique linen. Now, these are all inks. They're not oxides. You could use oxides if you wanted, um, but I like the sort of translucency of the inks. So let's put that down on your messy mat, add a little bit of water till you've got these nice beads and then just dunk, 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 dunk. See what you've got. Antique linen is very light, but it is a layer of colour. That's what we want. See what we've got there. Ooh, not very much, not very much at all. Let's add some more to a part where there's no water. You don't really want to be getting water on your ink pad. Let's see if we can get some more colour on that one. A little bit, a little bit. It's probably fine. Oh yeah, that's, we're getting there now. Definitely getting there now and I've got a big blank space along here so try and fill that in a little bit if I can. Yeah, that's fine. That'll do me fine. I'm just going to wipe that off. If you've got a, a spare inky background going you can just add that to the top of it. I have but for the purposes of the video I'll just dry those off like that. So I'll dry those and I'll be straight back. Right, so they are dry. It never fails to amaze me how much colour you actually get out of antique linen. You know, it's a kind of, mm, kind of nothing colour. When you see it like this, it's glorious, isn't it? It's really lovely. So I've now introduced a strip of this paper as well, um, which I want to colour. And I'm going to try my dried marigold. See if there's anything in the old girl. Oh yeah, there's a bit, there's a bit, there's a good lot. Excellent. Just give that a little spritz. And then we can start. I'm going to start with this piece actually. And just dunk that. That's looking good. Looking great. Yeah, I like that. And then into these ones. And we've already got that coat of antique linen so we don't need to be too forceful about things. I think that's probably just fine. Just trying to pick up as much as I can really now rather than waste it. a bit more orangey than this one but mm. yeah it's quite a lot more orangey so let's just put another little bit of the dried marigold down and pick up some more of it that's looking better yeah, that's great. Happy with those. And this one I'm going to dry and then I'm going to go back into that colour. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of the dried marigold down. Not masses. It's just for this little piece here, really. Give that a little quick spritz. See if I can pick up some, yeah, some of those nice, finer bubbles bubbles perfect perfectly perfect okay let's wipe this off and i'm just going to dry everything now okay so we're all nice and dry 
let's put those to one side and with this piece the little thin strip that we had I want to stamp some butterflies so I've got Miss P and I've got my butterflies I think they're Timmy ones not sure that these are going to stick by themselves let's put a bit of water there And I'm going to use Versafine Claire in the black, the Nocturne. I see that Versafine Claire, I've got a whole new set of inks out. 12 new inks. And do you think you can buy them in this country? Can you heck? <laughs> Rarer than hen's teeth. Um, I want to use a bit that's got a bit of texture on it. So let's go with this bit here. Give it a minute or two just for the ink to transfer. Look at that. That's beautiful. Beautiful. I've got a wet wipe here that I've got a paintbrush in. <laughs> I've been so industrious this morning. I really, really have. And most of it for no reason whatsoever. None of it's really worked very well. <laughs> And it's now just gone six at night. <laughs> Let's try and use this bit here. There we are. Perfect. Really nice images. You can depend on Timmy for some good images. There we are. So that can go to the side, that can go over there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just give those a couple of seconds to dry and then I'm going to fussy cut them. And trust me guys, you don't want to watch me fussy cut. It's a laborious task. Um, but I am going to fussy cut both of those out. So I'll be back when I've done Right, so I've fussy cut those out. This one probably could have done with a bit more colour, to be honest. When you put it on there it just needs to stand out a little bit more and that, that one kind of gets even more lost to be honest so what i've decided to do is take some black um i don't know it's 160 gsm kind of thick paper thin card whatever and i'm going to stick these on here and i'm going to fussy cut them out again but leave a margin so let's stick them onto there I like making work for myself, can you tell? As Mr F would say, I am a busy fool. <laughs> I'm busy. I will agree with that. So it doesn't really matter where you stick them because it's black. It can be at any old cockeyed angle. I mean, that stands out so much better on there. So I can only presume that when it's got a black margin around it, it will stand out a little bit better. I'm hoping so anyway. That's the theory. So, yeah, more fussy cutting. Oh, yay. Let's pop that one there. Right, so you know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to, come on little antenna, there we are. I'm just going to nip off and fussy cut these. Okay, cookie, so I've done those. Um, I think they stand out a little bit more. That one in particular definitely does. This is quite a dark one to begin with, um, but I like it. Uh, so let's cut the corners off because it's a tag and this time I'm go not going to use the smallest one. I'm going to use the slightly larger one. I just want to accentuate that tag shape, no other reason. So, and then I'm going to try and get rid of some of my, well not get rid, 
use up that's more that's better use up some of the um bits of timmy ephemera that i have left from packs where i've used all the flowers and everything else that i wanted and then i'm left with bits that i never use so i generally have them in multiples actually and i'll, I'll show you one box that i've got but i've got several boxes like these um, and, and they really do need to be used up so i just want to go around the edge of that um, with a little bit of the dried marigold and i don't surprisingly have a brush for dried marigold so i'm going to use a new one and i, th I don't think there's much ink left in here to be honest with you but i'm just going to come in from the edge and do a little border around there just to get that nice feeling that a border gives a piece of work I think blimey there is no ink left in there at all I'm not surprised it's not kind of one of my go-to colours as dried marigold but when you want it, you want it, and I want it, and there's no ink. So there we are, that's, it's gone around it, I quite like that. Let's do the same with the other one. No, actually, let's just leave that one. I'll, I'll come back to them um, when you're not watching. <laughs> and then I'm going to go for my vintage photo. And I'm just going to try and just clip the edge if I can. Yeah, just like that. You could use your dauber if you've, if, you, if you've got a dauber handy. I just don't have one handy. So I'm just cautiously going around this edge here. Just trying to clip just the edge. Like that. And that just exaggerates that edge if you like. There we are. I like that. So then we get down to, don't need my messy mat anymore. Um, those I must remember need stitched around. So we've got, let's play with this one first. So that's kind of going to go there, but I want obviously something behind it. So let's see what we've got left out of all. It's kind of the same, the same things keep reoccurring in this box mm, that, one, that one might be okay just want this sort of off to the side a little bit yeah that one could be okay let's see what else we've got that I like the look of um, Oh, there's that one with all the moths on it. Oh, then again, no, that one's a bit big. That one, is that the same one? It's the same one. <laughs> well, I obviously like it. Um, oh, what about that one? Leave that out, that's a possibility. Oh, there's so many things in here. What about that one? These never get used, these layers. I hardly ever use them because they're so blooming thick. Yeah, I don't think it's right for that job either. How about that one? Too little. <laughs> oh dear. That's a nice salvage tag in there. Uh, which I wouldn't find if I was looking for it, would I? What about that? Yes, like that one. I'll just do a quick flip through. I like that one as well. See that? I mean, it's just so big, isn't it? You can't see when I'd ever use that. What about that one? No, wrong colour. Mm. Oh, goodness me, goodness me, goodness me. 
all sorts of everything has come here to die. A lot of no's and not many yeses. What about that one? Leave that one out, see what we think. And that one. That's probably a bit too big, right? Okay, I'm losing interest now. <laughs> losing interest, losing the will to live. Right, so my butterfly's there, so that's going to be like that. Quite like that, that's okay. What about this one? It's too blue. This one's probably too big, but I could cut it down. I quite like that one actually. My, my, that's too blue as well. This one, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. And this one I think is probably too big. It's too big, too blue, too not right. So I'm liking this one a lot. And I think I might just go with that. Way there's my chopper. So I'm just I just want to cut this down. I'd like it to come just beyond halfway and to about there. So at the end of March. There. Not even sure this is to me paper if I'm honest with you. I can't think I've ever seen it before. Keep the remnant, you never know. You never know when you just need that little bit. So there we are, our carefully chosen background. Yes, I like it. Uh, and then I want some more of my little curator snips. snippets. Snippets. Um, Okay, I'm not going to ink that, I don't think, oh I don't know mate, shall I, no, no I don't think I am, I kind of promised myself I wouldn't, um, I've got this brown, that's quite nice, oh, this has been a, this has been how it's been all day actually, things go right, things go wrong, I think we're doing okay now and that I want that coming out beyond the edge of that there so yeah I quite like those there like that that's just fine I would say just dandy and I want something else down here so that sort of color is the color that I'm looking at see what else we can find it's a teeny weeny one. It's maybe a bit light, but we'll see. Um, anything else? Yeah, that one. Okay, so I'm bound to have what I need in this lot, surely. So let's... I just want a little collage. Nothing too fanciful. Let's pop that right up there, like that. And maybe just that small one. Maybe we need nothing more than that. I think that's fine. I don't think we need any more than that. No, I think I think that's all right. Uh, right. So let's. Am I going to ink round those? No, I don't think I am. I think I'm just going to stick everything on as is. So let's stick this down first. And that's definitely not getting inked. I'm going to use Collal just in case I have to shuffle it around somewhere. Yeah, you see, I don't think this is to me. Um, paper, not that it matters. It tinkers curse, to be honest. Um, I'm just going to put that there, far in excess over to this side than that side. Try and get it square, like that. Then I'm going to put my butterfly on where I want it to go, 
which is there and then I can get my little pieces on um, which I am going to stick on with a finer tip than that so that can go there further out a little bit yeah okay kind of got the hang of what we're doing I think yeah of all the Timmy stuff that I've got I'd say the curator snippets gets the biggest hammering of any I'm forever using them so that wants to go kind of there well just up a little bit I want it coming out over the top of that background paper and then that one wasn't it I think oh last night I went to bed and um, I was absolutely absolutely wide awake um, and it was late as well it was gone midnight and uh, but you know it was bedtime so I went to bed and I laid there and we always have the the television on in the bedroom with the BBC news on um just to go to sleep to really um and I, we we have it on a, a timer so it switches itself off after an hour and the hour came and the hour went and I was still there and still wide awake and I was thinking, what on earth is wrong? You know, why can't you just go to sleep? And then it dawned on me. I'd forgotten to take my sleeping tablets. I'd forgotten to take all my evening tablets. My sleeping tablet was amongst it. So there I was, bolt upright. So I had to get up then because I had to take my tablets, which was no bother because I was, as I say, wide awake. Um, and took my tablets, then I stayed around in the living room that look all right might need something else actually i don't know um until i felt sleepy but i overstayed my welcome because then i woke up at half past four <laughs> um don't know what does that look like no i don't know that it does need anything Maybe just that one in there. <sighs> Don't know. What about that one down at the bottom? I think that's better. Let's do that. Um, yeah, so as a consequence, I didn't wake up till late today. And subsequently, I've been chasing my tail all day long. I'm really getting nowhere. Okay, I'm happy with that. Happy, happy, happy. Yes, I am. So let's um, glue this down. And we're just about finished, I think, apart from stitching around it. And um, putting the little topper in. So that goes there, that goes there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Happy, happy, happy. If you wanted to, you could stamp the background before you started. There's a dozen, million dozens of things that you could do to this to alter it. But I quite like that. Um, and I'm now going to go and stitch around it in black, which will just bring that in a little bit more. Right, so I have stitched around it. I stitched around these little ones as well when I was there. And I put my topper in. Uh, it's just a bit of crinkled uh, seam binding. There's the other one that I made, my prototype, if you like, um, which I'm, I much prefer. I love these bluey, steely colours. Um, that was speckled egg and weathered wood and 
Oh, they just love it. It depends which camp you're in, doesn't it? You know, if you're in the joyful camp, maybe you prefer the happy, happy colours. Uh, so there we have it. So they will go in to our one of our centre pockets. Let's see if we can find one. Here we go. So I will have them in pairs so they they match. But for the purposes of this, let's just see what they look like like that and then oh that's already got some in that's oh no it's, it's only the back i can put that in i've only got one pocket so yeah bear with um so that's our back tabs with a nice um little bit of frou-frou there at the top and they all all the pockets will be the same just made out of different remnants really um and there's our tags to go in the back. So homework for the weekend, guys. <laughs> um, see if you can get all 10 done, all five centre spreads done. And then we're on to, I think, um, I think making pockets, making tags for here. Yeah, for this sort of thing here. Although I rather like it like that. I'm kind of inclined to leave it, to be honest with you. Um, and we also need wherever the pocket ones, the frame ones are, like this one. This needs a journaling card in there as well. So, yeah, just a matter of going through it really and seeing what needs to be done. So with that, I shall leave you. Um, I hope you enjoy. I hope you got something out of it anyway. Um how do they go like that so i'll leave it with those and i will see you probably on monday <laughs> bye for now guys take care have a nice weekend bye